obviously we know the top tier is some combination of Ohio State, Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, and Washington. Um, those are the upper echelon teams historically. Um, the new Big Ten is coming. We have uh, two teams from the Big Ten. The new Big Ten played for a national championship next year. Um, but who do you think, uh, based on your immensely beautiful and big brain, in the Big Ten has a chance to compete or be up in that top tier on the field coming up this season um, that doesn't in that group right now? Yeah, I guess I would kind of split it in a little bit um, in a couple of different ways. I- I'm probably less bullish on Oregon and Washington being able to maintain this level of, of success that they've achieved the last couple of years, specifically last year. I do think USC is more than capable of rejoining that fold. I would still kind of put it in, um, you know, category one hierarchy. Ohio State dropped the hammer this this uh, portal season. The players that they got in the portal um, – the, they are the favorite to me in college football, not just in the Big Ten. But but I think, you know, you put Ohio State, you put Michigan, put Penn State, and I'd still put USC in there because even though, I mean, it was a, they're a year removed from, from almost being there. They won 11 games. And then I would put kind of in that next tier, which is when they're good, they're really good, and, and that's Oregon, Washington. Uh, and I would also put Penn State, by the way, in the tier one but Oregon Washington if I didn't say USC in the tier one two at the beginning I excuse me that was an unintentional oversight but continue okay but yeah you know there, there are schools that we've overlooked for a long time you know and I would say you know Wisconsin's kind of been on a down it down slope Iowa has been on more of an upslope winning wise but they've done it so ugly that people hate even acknowledging them um, I think Michigan State's very capable I think Nebraska is capable if they can get off off the mat. And so, uh, you know, I would put probably those six schools in that next kind of tier, which is Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan State, Nebraska, all as very capable of joining in individual seasons, the, the, the main four, being competitive, going to the championship game, going to the playoffs, winning a playoff game. Um, it just kind of depends on how their seasons come together. Then after that, it, it gets a little bit more I and mean, it gets mixed. I mean, UCLA is kind of, I've, I kind of refer to them as, as the, the Maryland of the West coast. They get talent. They they're you kind of every year you expect them that, you know, one year, Josh Rosen's out there throwing darts and beating teams at the end of the game. And, and then all of a sudden they're like, they're four and eight. What happened? You know, if Maryland, yeah, right, right. Maryland starts four and oh, five and oh, they're killing teams. And, you know, I saw it firsthand. They were four and oh, and, and uh, I be, I will beat some 51 to 17. You know, they just, those, those teams, Minnesota, Illinois, from time to time, Purdue from time to time, um, you know, they all have those you know, in Northwestern too. They all have those seasons where you're thinking, ah, they could maybe put it together once and be a competitive team, but to be a championship caliber playoff caliber upper echelon team year in and year out, that's probably not realistic. So, and then, you know, finally, you know, like an in Indiana Rutgers, it, it's going to take a while for them to have any kind of staying power because they've had individual moments and seasons. I think Greg Schiano is a really good coach. Um, but can he get them past six or seven wins in a season? That's that's going to be really tough because, you know, going into this last year, it, everybody's always said about Rutgers and Maryland, it's like, ah, once they get out of the East, they'll be fine. Well, hell, Rutgers only won four games against the West in 10 years. So it's not like when they play, you know, a Wisconsin or an Iowa that it's going to be magically easier. I mean, they got, they got beat by both teams this year. So I think this is a... You know, if I was to tier it, I would put those four in the upper tier. As I said, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, and USC. I would put Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan State, and Nebraska in the next tier because they're capable. And then everybody else kind of after that. I'm leaving the the <laughs> area of the show because he put Oregon in the second tier, and I don't want to be associated with that. Okay. <laughs> it scares me. He clips stuff. Cam, the producer, clips stuff, and it goes on the internet. Um, Oregon, Oregon, Oregon is, I think, in my opinion, that's the one thing I would push back on. Okay. Scott, an unquestionably top tier 
they are recruiting and have the NIL there to be a, a, a very good football team um, into the future. And I, w- I would buy stock in them. But other than that, I think that you're 100% on. Um, lastly, wanted to ask you about the Big Ten here. Michigan is the defending national champions, had one of the best seasons in recent memory, finished completely undefeated, undisputed. All those words uh, were earned. The question I have for you is with Jim Harbaugh potentially or probably leaving for the NFL at some point, um, a lot of the talent walking out the door that was part of this national championship team, including their quarterback. Uh, what do you view Michigan in terms of staying power in that top tier? And how does their future look to you? I think they can, they will fluctuate a little bit more than say Ohio state would, because I think this is where you, you know, your expertise comes in and they just don't necessarily recruit at the, one, two, three, four level the way everybody else does. And Jim Harbaugh was able to get them up there. But but remember, until this recent stretch, the last three years, they were good, not great. I mean, 2020 was a complete disaster, but but throwing that season out, even the years before that, they would they lost a lot to Ohio State. Can they sustain upper level talent at all those key spots? JJ McCarthy was the first legitimate NFL quarterback that he's had. I mean, that he's by far the best one that they've had. You know, they've had great offensive lines and they've supplemented them. You know, even the years where, you know, there were won the Joe Moore Award, what, a couple of years ago, and then they're able to get Drake Nugent and Ladarius Henderson out of the out of the portal. And and can they consistently do that with that style of play? Um, it's going to take a little bit more it's going to be a little bit tougher. I think you look at Ohio State, the fact that it recruits at you know, it's one, two, or three every single year and and plays. Uh, you know, its defense now is so much better under Jim Knowles than it's been in years. And, the, the you know, really this year the the come down was, was quarterback. And if they can, you know, they've t- taken some pretty damn talented young quarterbacks in the last day or two. But um, I think overall – Michigan has the potential to to be a competitive team in the Big Ten to get to the playoff and win it um, once in a while and be in the playoff, say, three or four every five years. But I think Ohio State still has more lasting power. I know that that's different than this three-year run, um, but you're going to have to look more globally. And I think globally it's about athletes in space, and I think that's probably where Ohio State will – uh, excels a little bit and uh, USC has the potential to excel. All right, Scott, it's game time. Are you ready? Yeah. And by the way, you're right about Oregon. <laughs> <laughs>